Mark III version of BMW's 1 Series gets a new platform, a new drive layout and a cutting edge range of engines. It's sleeker, lighter, safer, more practical and more efficient than before. And the company reckons it's still the most rewarding steer in the compact premium hatch sector. Big claims for an important car. Front wheel drive and BMW. Once it was a phrase you'd never hear, but that was then, and this is now. Welcome to the third generation BMW 1 Series. Unlike its predecessors, and pretty much every popular model this Munich maker has brought us in its traditional past, this F40 Series model is front driven and proud to be. Compromise or clever evolution? We're going to find out. BMW is a company that always used to try and do things differently, a refreshing trait in a sea of automotive sameness. The Bavarian brand's reputation as the purveyor of the ultimate driving machine was once fundamentally built around rear-wheel drive and that famed perfect 50-50 weight distribution. Cornerstones not even compromised when the time came in the early 90s to deliver a small hatch. The resulting 3 Series compact model of 1993 was defiantly rear-driven in a Golf and Focus segment full of front-wheel drive rivals. And the same approach was carried forward to the car that evolved from it, the original E87 design BMW 1 Series of 2004, a model later repackaged to a similar formula with the F20 second generation 1 Series of 2011. So why the change? Well, lots of reasons really. At the end of this century's first decade, the BMW board invested heavily in an all new front driven UK L2 platform for its group's compact models, cars like the two series Active Tourer and second generation versions of the X1 and Mini's Clubman and Countryman. This was technology that the suits in Munich wanted to see more return from and at the same time, they were uncomfortably aware of just how much the packaging limitations of rear wheel drive cramped space for luggage and backseat passengers were hobbling the 1 Series in comparison to its more conventional Audi A3 and Mercedes A-Class rivals, all of which seemed a bit pointless given BMW's own research showing 80% of 1 Series owners not knowing what end their cars were driven from and not caring either. The deal was sealed when the Bavarian makers engineers assured the board that new technology could allow for a switch to front wheel drive for this car without any real dilution in driving pleasure. We'll see. What's certainly true is that the change in drivetrain format has, as intended, freed up significantly more interior space than the previous F20 version of this car could offer, despite the fact that this F40 series design's roadway footprint is much the same. With this third generation 1 series model launched here in mid-2019, BMW has evolved its front-driven platform with a greater mix of aluminium and high-strength steel. And the resulting so-called FAAR underpinnings are not only impressively light and stiff, but are also able to support the kind of optional adaptive damping system you couldn't have in the old car. Aside from engineering, potential buyers should also like the much higher quality cabin, the improved efficiency from the lightly evolved three and four cylinder engines, and the high-tech camera-driven safety and media connectivity features. Sounds promising. Time to put this car to the test. So, a fresh start for the One Series. Car magazines have lamented this third generation model switch from rear to front wheel drive, but at car and driving, we don't really feel the need to put on the black armbands. Yes, the sensation of being thrust along through the bends from the rear could be more fun on powerful older generation versions of this car, but in truth, the mainstream variants most people bought might just as well have been front driven for all the difference that unusual drivetrain made in normal motoring. Even for an enthusiast on an empty country road, the fact that the car usually had more grip than grunt made it difficult to exploit the advantages of the rear-driven layout. Better then to switch to front-wheel drive, but deliver it in a very BMW kind of way, which is of course what's happened with this Mark III F40 generation 1 Series model. You feel that within the first half mile of driving this car, 
It helps that you sit a little lower than the class norm and there's a grippy, confident sense of purpose that rivals can't quite match with precise, accurate steering and an agile willingness to change direction. That's helped by an engineering balance that gets within a fraction of achieving perfect 50-50 front to rear weight distribution. The overall feel isn't quite as dynamic and distinctive as the experience served up by the previous F20 series design, but there's still enough here to please someone who likes their driving. This car's new FA AR chassis helps here, using a richer mix of aluminium and high strength steel than featured in the previous platform, which stiffens the structure and sheds around 25 kilos of weight from it. These fresh underpinnings also make it possible for BMW to offer the option of adaptive suspension to buyers of this model line for the first time, though most owners probably won't bother with that and we're not testing it here. Yes, this car's ride is certainly firm-ish and you'll certainly feel potholes and speed humps a little more than you would with obvious rivals, particularly on a model with M Sport suspension and the biggest 19-inch size of wheel rim. But BMW buyers tend to expect that and to be frank, it's nothing you couldn't live with. Actually, across variable undulating surfaces and at higher speeds, the car rides rather well thanks to the proper independent link rear suspension system that features right across the range, the kind of thing some rivals compromise on with lower powered versions of their cars you'll want to know about engines. All of them, the usual units that the BMW and Mini brands tend to roll out across their front-driven compact models, though in this case, the Bavarian engineers insist that efficiency tweaks across the range have made them cleaner and more frugal. In case you're not familiar with this powertrain formula from cars like the X1 and the 2 Series Active Tourer, we'll tell you that it sees entry-level models getting 1.5-litre three-cylinder petrol and diesel units with front-wheel drive and the option of Steptronic dual-clutch seven-speed auto transmission, while mid- and top-range variants get four-cylinder, two-litre diesel or petrol powertrains with a ZF torque converter eight-speed auto gearbox that, like X-Drive four-wheel drive, is either optional or standard on top versions. It's quite likely that you'll opt for the base 1.5-litre petrol model, the 140-horsepower 118i variant that we're trying here, not least because there aren't any other options if you want a reasonably affordable version of this car that fuels from the green pump. Just as well, then, that it's a decent all-round package which offers as much performance as most buyers will probably need. The 62 mile an hour sprint occupying 8.5 seconds en route to 132 miles an hour. To be frank, we've heard more charismatic three-cylinder units, but at least this one's decently refined, bettering a comparable Mercedes A-Class in this regard at highway speeds. You get a little more diesel grumble in the alternative 116D variant, which, true to its badging, offers 116 horsepower and delivers about 20% more pulling power through the gears. With this derivative, the performance stats for a manual model fall to 10.3 seconds and 124 miles an hour. BMW expects the most popular model in the range to continue to be its most affordable 2-litre four-cylinder diesel variant, the 150-horsepower 118D. And you can see why, thanks to this version's appealing combination of potential 60 mpg economy and sprightly performance. Buyers choose between a 6-speed manual or the 8-speed ZF Auto. There's 350 newton meters of torque, over 50% more pulling power than you get in this 118i. To dispatch quick overtakes and 62 miles an hour from rest occupies around 8.5 seconds on the way to around 135 miles an hour. As a mid-range alternative to the 118D, BMW has engineered a plug-in hybrid 1-series variant using the same 1.5-litre petrol electric powertrain that features in the Mini Countryman PHEV. But that version wasn't offered at the launch of this F40 series range, which left quite a price gap between the 118D and the top auto-only 2-litre petrol and diesel variants at the very top of the 1 Series lineup. Cars that have to be had with BMW's X-Drive four-wheel drive system. The first of these, the 120D X-Drive, offers the same kind of formula that 1 Series buyers were favoured with last time round, the 2-litre 
diesel in a 190 horsepower state of tune and a generous helping of all wheel traction. Here, the 62 mile an hour sprint occupies seven seconds en route to 143 miles an hour. More controversial though is the mechanical formula of the flagship hop hatch model, the M135i. Previous high performance petrol one series variants gained something of a cult following thanks to their sonorous three liter straight six engines. So if you happen to be an enthusiast shopping at the top end of the range, you might be disappointed to find that this time round, the model badged M135i has a four cylinder two liter unit beneath the bonnet. Once you also factor in the switch to front wheel drive, the result, as you might expect, is a very different confection, particularly as the power being developed has fallen significantly to 306 horsepower. BMW points out that the performance on offer rests to 62 miles an hour in 4.8 seconds on route to 155 miles an hour exactly replicates that of the old 340 horsepower M140i model and that the new M135i has the added advantage of standard X-Drive four-wheel drive, launch control and a newly developed mechanical torsen, limited slip differential to get its grip to the gravel. But it's a very different kind of car from before that now merely replicates what's on offer from obvious rivals like the Golf R and the Audi S3. As a result, we find ourselves more charmed by lesser 1 Series variants like the 118i model that, as mentioned, we've chosen to test today. This isn't one of those engines you feel particularly inclined to rev out. Not much of any import happens over 5,000 RPM, but it's a willing little unit where you really need it to be and is a perfect partner to the way that this BMW can proactively use every ounce of its performance when the road twists and turns. Part of that's down to the BMW performance control torque vectoring system that intelligently applies the brakes at the wheels on the inside of the bend. But that's a setup all cars in this segment now feature. This car's small but important advantage when it comes to agile handling is down to more unique tractional technology. This is found in the new ARB contiguous wheel slip limitation package that the brand now fits to all versions of this car. Clever tech that the brand first developed for its electric i3 model to more precisely meter out the battery powertrain's vast reserves of instant torque. Normal traction control systems work in concert with stability control and apply subtle braking the instant the software senses the wheels are about to spin too fast. But ARB reacts 10 times quicker than such a conventional setup, which means that it's more precisely able to control the engine's torque. That can often stop the wheels from over-rotating in the first place and so reduces the need for time-consuming brake intervention, meaning that your progress through the turns is both smoother and faster. Of course, you don't really have to know how it works, but if you enjoy your driving, you will appreciate the difference that it makes. Whatever engine you choose in your One Series, you'll find it designed to work with a standard vehicle dynamic system that these days is very familiar to BMW drivers. Drive, performance, control, the mode buttons of which you'll find down here by the gear stick. If you're coming to this car from another premium brand, you're probably also familiar with this kind of thing, a setup that allows you to tweak the steering, throttle and stability control system thresholds depending on the operating mode you select gear change times too if you've an auto gearbox model. Ignore drive performance control or select its most relaxed, comfort or efficient Eco Pro settings and the travelling experience in this car, though very comfortable, isn't especially memorable. Select Sport though and the reaction you get immediately feels keener and more alert, even including artificial blips as you downshift through the gears. Sport also adds extra weight to the steering, though in a way that can make the helm of this car feel rather artificially heavy. Drive performance control can also alter ride quality, though only if you happen to have chosen a top spec M Sport variant and have paid extra for the adaptive suspension system we mentioned earlier. What else might you need to know here? Well, there's a great deal more technology whirring away beneath the surface this time around. 
And not only when it comes to the extra camera-driven safety and semi-autonomous driving features that can now be fitted. Take, for instance, the way that intelligent tech cuts in to alter the shift programs of the two auto gearboxes to suit your planned route and the current driving conditions. Plus, where active cruise control is fitted, the auto boxes both factor in GPS data to avoid unnecessary gear changes in a quick succession of bends. We also like the innovative reversing assistant, which offers automated reversing in confined spaces. To do that, this feature stores steering movements for any section of road the car's driven over at under 22 miles an hour. The system is then able to automatically reverse the vehicle for distances of up to 50 meters while steering it along exactly the same line it took when moving forward. All the driver has to do is operate the accelerator and brake pedal and monitor the vehicle's surroundings. It's very clever, as almost every aspect of this car has now become, and the result is a far more complete contender. If you're a previous 1 Series buyer, the resulting package won't be quite what you're used to, but ultimately we think that in the mainstream part of the range, there's a very good chance that you'll grow to like it rather more. always wondered what kind of 1 Series BMW stylists would have come up with if they hadn't been constrained by the need to package around rear-driven mechanicals. In this Mark III model, we have our answer. A hatch that offers a similar roadway footprint to its F20 predecessor. It's a mere 5mm shorter, but one delivered to an otherwise very different dimensional formula. Much like its direct segment rivals, it's around 4.3 metres long, about 1.4 metres tall, and around 1.7 metres wide, but that makes this car's proportions quite different to those of that previous model. This F40 series design sitting 34 millimetres wider and 13 millimetres higher than the old car. There's plenty else that's different here too. The profile perspective revealing a more wedge-shaped silhouette and a pronounced shark-style nose. You can only now have this five-door body shape, the previous three-door option having now been abandoned. Two prominent character lines feature, one flowing beneath the door handles from the front wings, the other starting in the lower part of the front door before lifting towards the rear quarter. There's the traditional BMW Hofmeister kink incorporated into the rear C-pillar. And bigger wheels feature to suit the current fashion zeitgeist. The rim options starting at 16 inches, but now extending all the way up to 19 inches, which is what we have here. The front is also very different from anything BMW has previously served up in one of its compact models. That's partly because of the adoption of this larger grille, which expands the usual pair of kidney-shaped intakes and joins them in the middle. The specification level you've chosen will determine the trimming of this feature, as well as the look of the front bumper, and therefore the style of its corner outlets and lower air intake. M Sport variants, like this one, certainly look cleaner and more distinctive, courtesy of this wider central intake and vertical corner outlet slashes. But all variants share the same headlight design, which now features full LED beams. There's a cleaner, more modern look at the rear too, which now features slim Lexus-like LED tail lamps with darkened lenses. There's a tailgate trailing edge that forms a subtle spoiler. And again, the bumper design is quite different with M Sport trim, with shorter, more centrally positioned lower reflectors, slashed vertical corner cutouts, and a lower diffuser section featuring dark shadow finishing. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. This car now based upon the Bavarian maker's latest FAAR platform, the acronym standing for an awkward to pronounce German phrase for front wheel drive architecture. It's a chassis and structure with a greater concentration of aluminium. That's now used for the bonnet and tailgate. And this, along with a greater proportion of high strength steel, has increased torsional stiffness and reduced body weight by around 25 kilograms. Time to take a look inside, but before we do, a word about keys. A little disappointingly, you can't specify the kind of integrated screen display key you get on the brand's larger models, but some Android users will now get the chance to specify this car 
in such a way that will allow them to unlock it using their phone handsets. For that to work, you have to have specified the comfort access option and be in possession of a recently made top of the range Samsung Galaxy smartphone. The Munich maker boasts about how difficult this digital key packages incorporated NFC chip is to hack and has thought too about extra safeguards for this standard key. A movement sensor is now included within the fob to stop it from transmitting when it isn't being carried, so considerably reducing the risk of its signal being picked up by receiving devices. Up front, you're served up a premium slice of cabin architecture borrowed from the current G20 3 Series model, which means it's very nice indeed. The change in architecture also means it's noticeably roomier here than was the case with the previous version of this car. BMW claims an extra 42 millimetres more elbow room between the seats. The smart finishing, though, is what really catches the eye. There'll be plenty, of course, who prefer the cool conservatism of an Audi A3 or the showy technology of a Mercedes A-Class. But as a classy combination of both, this interior takes some beating. You'd certainly be reluctant to revert back to a volume-branded product in this segment after living with this BMW. Not least because this one series now has the cabin feel of a larger, much more luxurious product. Some of that's down to cabin quality, soft touch surfaces and the solid feel of all the fixtures and fittings matched on plusher models by things like contrast stitching and these intricate extended lighting door panel strips. Some of it's down to design. The start stop button, for instance, has been moved down next to the gear stick where it would be on an upmarket product. And some of it's down to technology though to an extent that'll depend a lot on your choice of equipment. A digital instrument cluster display hasn't yet made it to the standard kit list on a 1 Series, which seems a bit yesteryear on a premium product in this day and age. The standard Live Cockpit Plus operating system 6.0 spec gets you two conventional gauges separated by a 5.1 inch trip computer readout. Even if you pay extra for a TFT instrument cluster screen, the 10.25 inch setup we have here, it's not particularly configurable, which is strange given that Audi's virtual cockpit package has been showing the market how this sort of thing should work since 2014. Not everyone likes the opposite swinging speedometer and rev counter needles of this BMW display and you can't completely lose them even if you opt for the reduced mode that focuses attention on the GPS map readout in the middle of the screen. That can't be expanded to fill the whole of the monitor as is possible with rival systems. This digital dash comes only as part of what BMW calls its Live Cockpit Professional Package, which is something you really have to look at if you're buying this car, and is a setup that's extra cost on all variants by the top M135i, where it's standard. This Live Cockpit Professional option delivers the operating system 7.0 tech, borrowed from the company's larger cars and also gets you a range of extra media features along with an increase in the size of this central infotainment display from 8.8 .8 to 10.25 inches. We'd want the live cockpit professional upgrade not only because of its bigger screens but also because it includes Wi-Fi hotspot preparation and a clever caring car feature that uses music, climate settings and lighting settings to relax or vitalise you. Plus, having live cockpit professional widens the way you can interact with the car. With this extra tech fitted, you can pay extra on top of the live cockpit professional price in order to get BMW's gesture control system, which allows you to operate certain infotainment functions with hand movements around the centre stack. But we wouldn't bother because the operating system 7.0 upgrade includes a more sophisticated voice control system that, in our view, will allow you to interact with the professional package tech rather better. We're referring to the Bavarian brand's new intelligent personal assistant, an inclusive part of that live cockpit professional package. This is a supposed fount of all knowledge that responds to voiced questions prefaced by Hey BMW, much as does the MBUX system in a rival Mercedes A-Class. Though here, you have to press a steering wheel button to get it to activate. 
BMW, of course, insists that its setup is cleverer. You can give it a name if you think it'll help you bond with it better. You can request it to tell you a spontaneous joke, and the press kit tells us we can even ask it the meaning of life. It's more likely, of course, that you'll be using it to make day-to-day -day driving just that little bit easier. If you tell it you're cold, it'll turn up the temperature. If you don't understand a particular feature, it'll trot out explanatory text from the online handbook. Or you might want it to check your oil level, look for fuel stations along your route, or read out your messages. Whatever media package you opt for with this car, Live Cockpit Plus with its smaller screens, or the Live Cockpit Professional package, We've just been briefing you on you should feel that this bmw's infotainment system is very much up to class standard with both the center dash screen formats the layout is clear and logical and we like the simple intuitive way the iDrive system works with its neat lower controller a better solution than the touchpad of that rival mercedes and screen tiles that can be customized to your taste the display sidebar menu gives you media communication navigation, car and apps options that are also duplicated by buttons next to that lower iDrive controller and connect you into features like the DAB audio system, 4G LTE connectivity and advanced navigation. Plus, the system can remotely update its own software and there's also what the brand calls an open mobility cloud that via a clever BMW Connected Plus app can allow you to interact with the car when you're not in it, for instance, allowing you to remotely view it in 3D. The Bavarian maker does, though, seem annoyingly undecided in whether its smartphone allegiance should be to Android or Apple. Having limited access to its digital key feature to Android users, smartphone mirroring in a One Series is restricted to the Apple CarPlay system. The popular Android Auto format is ignored, and Apple folk are only served free for a year, beyond which they'll be irritated to find that a subscription's payable. Quite a lot of the other connected drive digital stuff is also time limited before subscriptions become payable, so check the small print carefully. You do at least get three years free use of helpful stuff like real-time traffic information and BMW's excellent concierge service, the latter feature connecting you through to an operator with a 24-7 service answering just about any journey inquiry you might have. Enough with media stuff, let's get on to more practical issues. It's annoying to find that lumbar adjustment costs extra with all trim levels, but assuming you have it, it's difficult to imagine how you could fail to get comfortable in this car thanks to the amount of movement and adjustability provided by both seat and wheel. Go for M Sport trim and you get this lovely leather stitch wheel, which is brilliant, thick and grippy, but at some angles can sometimes obscure the bottom of the instrument dials. Not that you'll be looking at them very much if you've opted for the optional head-up display. This feature fitted to a One Series for the first time. Now, what about all-round visibility? Well, there are pluses and minuses here. The view forwards is fine, aided by slim A pillars, but the chunky rear C pillars mean that your over-the-shoulder vision is more restricted, so you'll need the standard fit parking sensors. We've no complaints about cabin practicality though. A central lidded storage cubby sits between the seats and includes a USB port. Plus the glove box is a reasonable size, as are the door bins, which include holders big enough to take one litre water bottles. Twin cup holders sit at the base of the centre stack with a moulding incorporating a 12 volt port and a USB point. And there's a slot just behind that that'll wirelessly charge your phone if you specify that option. BMW has forgotten to include an overhead sunglasses compartment, but there's a useful compartment by the driver's right knee and ticket clips in the sun visors. Time to take a seat in the back, which is where you'd think real gains would have been made as part of the more efficient packaging possible following this model's switch from rear-wheel drive to a front-driven platform. So let's pull back the now wider opening door and take a look. 
Changes certainly needed to be made here. The old Mark II F20 generation model offered rear folk just 690 millimetres of legroom, which to give you some perspective is about what you get from a typical super mini in the class below. In this F40 series car, that figure has increased by 33 millimetres. Essentially, there's about 10 millimetres more room than you get in a comparable Mercedes A-Class. And it feels like more because the car's hit point has been raised and the seat backs are scalloped to make more room for your knees. Rear passengers also have 13 millimetres more elbow room and BMW says there's 19 millimetres more headroom too, but that's only when the optional panoramic roof is fitted. You wouldn't expect a sliding rear bench on a car of this class. You'd need to upgrade to BMW's X1 SUV for that, but reclining seat backs would have been a nice touch. They're missing though. As with most compact hatches in this class, there's really only comfortable space for two adults. The height of this central transmission tunnel means a third occupant will feel cramped, though at least it's lower than it was before. Practical touches include central vents above twin USB ports, overhead coat hooks and reading lights, ISOFIX fastenings for the outer two seating positions, and decently sized bins in the doors that feature classy stitched panels. Let's take a look out back. Now this electrically operated tailgate offered on a one series for the first time is optional and can be embellished with extra cost comfort access, which allows you to raise it by waving your foot beneath the bumper. If key in pocket, you approach the car with both hands laden down with bags. And once the hatch rises, you're provided with a very reasonable 380 litres of cargo capacity. That's the same as a Volkswagen Golf and 20 litres more than the previous generation one series and the current Mercedes A-Class. The luggage bay is 67 millimetres wider than it was in the previous model, which ought to make the shape more usable, though in actual fact, if you're loading in standard sized carry-on cases, that A-Class will take six, one more than this BMW. The boot space here is accessed by a low loading lip and includes this useful false floor. Unfortunately, you can't remove it or adjust the height of it to suit taller loads. It does fold back neatly though and click into place out of your way when open so that you can easily get to the space underneath. There's plenty of space down here, though wiser customers will ensure that most of this is taken up by the available optional spare wheel, an option denied to M135i buyers. Usefully, a couple of tie-down hooks are provided here at the very bottom of the cargo area. Four more feature around the false floor above, plus you get a couple of bag hooks too. Most customers will want the optional luggage compartment package, which is standard with M Sport trim and gives you a package of useful extra features for this cargo area. An additional boot light, a strap in the side panel, a side compartment luggage net, a 12 volt socket, a rather impractical stainless steel loading edge sill cover and a cargo function for the second row seat backs that enables you to make them a touch more vertical so as to more easily cram in particularly bulky items like big suitcases. Need more room? Well, if you've paid extra for the through loading option that gives you this versatile 40-20-40 rear seat back split, you'll be able to push long items like skis through between a couple of rear seated folk. Push forward the rear bench and 1,200 litres of space can be freed up, which is the same as that rival Mercedes, but 37 litres less than you get in a Golf. Interestingly, this combined capacity figure is exactly the same as was served up by the previous generation car. That though is just about the only thing that hasn't changed here. The One Series has evolved and in almost every practical respect for the better. From launch, this third generation F40 one series range was priced from around £25,000 with asking figures that then stretched up towards the £37,000 mark. In the mainstream range, you can only have this five door body shape and there are three trim levels, SE, Sport and as here, M Sport, each one with its own unique styling and equipment package. Your starting point in the range will lie with a couple of 1.5 litre three cylinder models, either the petrol powered 118i 140 horsepower variant, which is what we have here, 
or the diesel powered 116D 116 horsepower, which requires a premium of around a thousand pounds. A six-speed manual gearbox is standard, or you can pay £1,350 more to get a dual-clutch seven-speed auto. If you want more power, a couple of two-litre diesel variants beckon, either the 150 horsepower 118D, which is priced from around £27,000, will probably be the strongest selling version and comes with a torque converter eight-speed sport automatic transmission as a £1,600 option. Alternatively, there's the 190 horsepower 120D, but that's quite a lot more expensive with prices starting from around £32,000 because it can only be had with that eight speed sport automatic transmission and X drive or wheel drive. You also have to have the Sport Auto and that X-Drive system on the top model, the M135i hot hatch, which has a two litre, 306 horsepower petrol engine and costs around 37,000 pounds. BMW has also engineered a 1.5 litre plug-in hybrid petrol electric version of this car, though that wasn't available at launch. Let's position this one series in the BMW lineup for you. It offers all the same engineering you get in the brand's entry-level SUV, the X1, at a model for model saving of around £4,000. And it also shares its engineering with the brand's small MPV, the 2 Series Active Toro, which costs around £1,000 more model for model. You can, incidentally, also have much of the same engineering in two similarly sized mini models, the Clubman and the Countryman. Base versions of both, which use the same 1.5 litre three cylinder petrol engine that features in this 118i, would respectively save you either around £2,500 or around £1,000. But of course, each of these cars has a rather different buying demographic from a 1 Series. As ever, it depends what you want. Right, on to rivals from competing brands. The two most obvious ones are the Audi A3, which costs fractionally more, and the Mercedes A-Class, the most affordable versions of which cost around £1,000 less than their One Series equivalents. At the time of this test, Volvo hadn't announced a replacement for its V40 model, but when it does, that will be a key rival too. Many potential 1 Series customers will also have the Mark 8 version of Volkswagen's Golf on their buying radar. Again, there'd be a small price saving if you went for that car. Others, though, will see the Golf as a car with a badge that's not sufficiently premium to directly compete with this BMW. In case you're wondering, a non-premium volume branded family hatch of this size, say a Ford Focus, a Vauxhall Astra, a Renault Megane or a Mazda 3, for instance, would typically save you four to five thousand pounds over a one series. But of course, you'd lose much of that saving over the ownership cycle with the higher levels of depreciation that afflict cars like those. If, having considered all your alternatives and ignored the temptation to opt instead for one of the many similarly engineered, similarly sized mid-shaped SUVs available at or around this price point, then you're going to need to know exactly what's included in the standard spec. Well, let's see. Even the thriftiest SE trim level gives you plenty, to be specific, 16-inch star-spoke alloy wheels, LED headlamps, LED front fog lights, park distance control, front and rear parking sensors, heated power mirrors and alarm and auto headlamps and wipers. There's also a package of Active Guard Plus camera safety features, and we'll get to those in a few minutes. Inside, there's automatic air conditioning, cruise control with a braking function, an auto-dimming rear-view mirror, and a sport multifunction leather-trimmed steering wheel. In addition, there's the drive performance control system that via Eco Pro, Comfort and Sport modes allows you to alter throttle response, steering feel, and on an auto model, gear change timing. All of it better suiting the way you want to drive. You'll want to know about infotainment and media stuff too, and there's lots of it. Let's start with the fact that all mainstream 1 Series models come as standard with the brand's BMW Live Cockpit Plus package, which gives you an 8.8-inch centre dash display, your access point for a navigation system, Bluetooth with audio streaming, 4G LTE Wi-Fi connectivity, an onboard computer, and a decent quality six-speaker 100-watt DAB stereo. 
There's also a 5.1 inch display in the instrument cluster and an intelligent voice assistant. The other standard media package inclusion your dealer will want to tell you about on this car is called Connected Package Plus. That gives you a whole range of media connectivity services, including Apple CarPlay, smartphone mirroring, though unfortunately this lasts only for a year before you have to pay a subscription for it. For a year, three years or the lifetime of the car. Disappointingly, the Android Auto smartphone mirroring system isn't supported. Some of the other Connected Package Plus features are also time limited, though more reasonably for three years. There are three elements. Real-time traffic information supplies details about the location and duration of any delays you might encounter in your journey. Remote services allows you to send destinations to your car, helps you to locate the vehicle if you've forgotten where you've parked it, and can remotely lock or unlock the doors. Plus, there's a concierge services feature that connects you to a BMW call centre agent who's available as an around-the-clock assistant for any questions you have about your car or your journey as you drive it. As would now be expected from the brand, one series buyers also get a full suite of BMW connected drive services, including tele-services and real-time traffic information, along with BMW's suite of online services that gives you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts, and a whole range of BMW apps. In addition, the system will even read out text messages to you. And talking of being connected, all one series buyers will be offered use of a clever BMW connected app that can learn your mobility routines, read your calendar, and even prompt when to leave for scheduled journeys. It'll get familiar with your most frequently traveled routes and memorize them as future destination. It even has a share live trip status feature that allows the driver to share their current location and time of arrival with business partners, friends, or family. All of that comes with standard SE trim. Ideally, though, you'd want to dress this car up a little and the next trim level up, Sport, begins to do that with 17-inch double-spoke alloy wheels, front and rear bumper elements finished in high-gloss black and high-gloss shadow line exterior trim that features on the mirror and window frames, the B and C pillars and the roof trims. Inside, Sport trim gets you sport seats, contrast stitching on the dash, illuminated interior trim, BMW door sill finishers, two-zone air conditioning and upholstery that's a smart combination of Nivala cloth and Sensatec man-made leather. That only leaves top M Sport trim, which is what we have here. Now, these variants recognisably stand out from the others thanks to their 18-inch M light alloy double-spoke wheels and a standard M aerodynamic body style kit, which includes a dark shadow finish for the bumpers, bespoke lower side sill covers and satin silver struts for the chrome-framed front grille. Inside, the main additions are Dakota leather upholstery, seat heating and extended lighting package, a luggage compartment package, an anthracite headliner, anthracite velour floor mats, M designated door sill plates and the chunky M Sport leather steering wheel that BMW buyers like so much. Bear in mind that with this top trim level, firmer M Sport suspension comes as standard, so make sure you're happy with the idea of a firmer ride. If you've gone for one of the various 2-litre M Sport models and stayed with 18-inch wheels, you'll be offered the opportunity to mitigate this to some extent by specifying optional adaptive damping, allowing you to alter ride quality to suit your preference. A large proportion of 1 Series M Sport buyers further tick the box for the M Sport Plus pack, which includes unique 18-inch Orbit grey V-spoke wheels, M Sport brakes, M Sport steering, M Sport seat belts, an M rear spoiler and sun protection glass. As you might expect, the top M135i xDrive variant has its own unique M performance spec. That gives this top variant specially tuned steering and suspension, plus its 18-inch M light alloy double spoke wheels have a bicolor finish and the front and rear bumper styling is bespoke. There's an M rear spoiler, unique side sill covers, and a cerium grey finish for the exhaust tailpipe, the side M logo, the mirror caps, and the frame of the front kidney grille. The M135i interiors are set apart by M seat belts and M sports seats with upholstery in Trigon cloth and anthracite Alcantara, plus 
This flagship variant comes with the brand's desirable live cockpit professional package with its 10.25 inch center dash and instrument cluster screens and connected package professional additional media connectivity features. More on those in a moment. Many M135i buyers are expected to upgrade to the optional M135i Plus pack, which includes sun protection glass, a Harman Kardon audio upgrade, and a choice of two designs of larger bicolor 19 inch wheel M V spoke or M double spoke. Having started to talk options, let's open up that whole subject and focus on what you might want to add to a more affordable version of this car. Now, as usual on a BMW, there's plenty of scope for extra spend. A good starting point here lies with the various optional packs branded either Comfort or Tech. There are a couple of each. Comfort Pack 1 is only for SE and Sport model customers and includes power folding mirrors, front seat heating and extended lighting. Also included in Comfort Pack 1 is a luggage compartment package that gives you lots for the cargo area. An additional boot light, a strap in the side panel, a netted side compartment, a 12 volt socket, a stainless steel loading edge sill cover and a cargo function for the second row seat backs that enables you to make them a touch more vertical so as to more easily cram in particularly bulky items like suitcases. We said there were two comfort packs. You might also want to consider the second one, which is offered across the range and includes a steering wheel heating, powered front seat adjustment, an automatic tailgate, and what BMW calls comfort access. Basically, keyless entry and gesture control for the rear hatch. Let's move on to the Tech Packs, both of which are available across the whole 1 Series lineup. Tech Pack 1 includes a head-up display, a reversing assist camera with park assist to steer you into spaces, enhanced Bluetooth with a wireless charging mat, Wi-Fi hotspot preparation and BMW Icon adaptive LED headlights that adapt themselves to road conditions and feature a high beam assistant. Tech Pack 2, meanwhile, gives you three things. Its main inclusion being the desirable live cockpit professional setup you'd find on BMW's larger models. And with this, you get a much larger touch sensitive 10.25 inch sensor dash monitor, a control display screen of the same size to replace conventional dials in the instrument cluster, Wi Fi hotspot preparation, and touch functionality for the iDrive controller. You'd expect all this extra tech to be able to do more and sure enough it can primarily through what BMW calls an intelligent personal assistant which works a bit like the Siri or Google Assistant systems you might use on your phone and is there to answer questions you can voice to the car as you drive it prefaced by the command hey BMW in addition this operating system 7.0 package has what BMW calls intelligent vehicle functionality which helps the driver learns their preferences and is familiar with their favorite settings for instance for the seat heating or the places they frequently drive using the navigation system we said earlier that the Tech Pack 2 included three things. The two other elements comprise a Harman Kardon surround sound system audio upgrade with 16 speakers and 464 watts. And what BMW calls its connected package professional portfolio, basically a lot of extra media tech. This gives you a connected parking feature, which advises you on parking spaces near your place of destination and connected navigation, which allows destination inputs from various apps straight into the car's navigation system and as you drive can offer proactive route suggestions based on road conditions while providing multiple map views with split screen options. In addition, there's also a selectable caring car feature on the center infotainment screen that uses music, lighting and the climate control in a three minute long session that will either vitalize or relax you. And the Connected Package Professional Portfolio also includes BMW's Connected Teaser three-month trial deal, which gives you a clever Microsoft Office 365 feature that syncs in your emails and your calendar. And you get the Munich Maker's online connected music system, which offers you access to the Napster premium streaming service. Right, enough with packs. You don't have to have one of those. In fact, 
You may prefer to individually select the various comfort and tech pack features we've just mentioned as standalone options. And we'd certainly recommend the live cockpit professional setup we've just been talking about. And if you get it separately from the £1,500 Tech Pack 2 deal, i.e. without the audio system upgrade, you'll reduce your outlay down to £1,000, which is a saving you could put towards adding gesture control to this whole media setup, a £300 extra. What about other individual extras you could look at? Well, let's start with driving stuff. Now, perhaps the most significant element here is adaptive suspension, which allows the various drive performance control driving mode settings to also alter ride quality. Now, bear in mind, though, that you can only specify adaptive suspension on either an M Sport or an M135i variant. And even then, you can only have it if you avoid the largest 19-inch wheel size. On an M Sport model, you might want to separately add in the M Sport braking system too. And across the range, plenty of buyers will want to consider the BMW Icon Adaptive LED headlamps we've been trying here, which can adapt their beam in a myriad of ways to road conditions and surrounding traffic. The brand also thinks that the head-up display, offered for the first time as an option with this model line, will be popular too. And if you think you or your partner might struggle with slotting this car into tight spaces, you could consider the Park Assist system, which automatically does it for you and includes a reversing assist camera. What else? Well, the Harman Kardon surround sound audio setup we've already mentioned. A wireless charging mat is available as part of an enhanced Bluetooth with wireless charging option. And you might also want to know that for the first time on a One Series, a panoramic glass roof is available. This one covering a 0.7 meter glass area and featuring an electrically operated roller blind. Many One Series buyers opt for a powered tailgate. And if you've gone for that, you're gonna particularly want the popular comfort access package we referenced earlier which, as mentioned, will allow you to operate that rear hatch with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. Plus, comfort access gives you keyless entry and will enable you to unlock the car with your smartphone, provided you have a recently made top-of-the-range Samsung Galaxy handset. More sensibly orientated cabin extras we think you'll almost certainly want include the through loading system, which gives you a more convenient 40-20-40 split for the rear backrest instead of the usual 60-40 split. And lumbar support for the front seats, which annoyingly isn't standard with any trim level. You might also like to have powered seat adjustment with memory settings, steering wheel heating and sun protection glass. On an SE or Sport Spec 1 Series model, you could well want seat heating and that luggage compartment package too. Practical extras include a luggage compartment separating net and of course you can have a detachable tow bar. We'd also want to pay extra for the larger 50 litre fuel tank, which only comes as standard with the X-Drive models. At the time of this test, this car couldn't be had with optional run-flat tyres. And with that being the case, we'd say that the optional Space Saver spare wheel is near essential if, in the event of a puncture, you don't want to be stranded on the side of the road with a fiddly puncture repair kit. You might also want to consider the BMW Trackstar vehicle tracking system in case of theft. On to aesthetics. Now, if you don't want your car's paintwork finished in the standard alpine white or jet black solid shades, you're going to have to pay more for one of the extra cost metallic colours. There's also a special BMW individual Storm Bay metallic shade. To complete the effect, there's a bespoke selection of alloy wheels that vary from 17 to 19 inches in size. And if you want to go further, then your dealer will introduce you to BMW's range of M performance accessories. Handcrafted carbon fibre attachments are available for the rear diffuser, the side skirts and the mirror covers. You can also add a race style rear roof spoiler finished either in carbon carbon fiber or high gloss black and you can have the front splitter and its associated aero flicks in high gloss black too if that's a look you like you'll want to get the look of the interior right too on se and sport models you can add in full dakota leather upholstery and sport variants can have this with either red and gray or mocha highlights too with the same option also available to m135i customers if you've gone for that m135i variant or any m sport model there's the no cost option of swapping out the standard illuminated boston 
trim inlays for alternative illuminated Berlin ones. That M Performance accessories collection we just mentioned also includes an M Performance steering wheel with Alcantara trimming. Enough with optional extras, let's move on to focus on safety, which, as you'd expect from a BMW, well accounted for. Hence, this car's full house, five-star Euro NCAP safety rating. If you owned the previous F20 Generation 1 series, you'll find that camera safety tech has advanced quite considerably with this F40 Generation car. The key new inclusion being the Active Guard Plus package that now features across all of BMW's modern models, which gets you the brand's front collision warning, autonomous braking technology. With this, at over 30 miles an hour, the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards. And if one is detected, you'll be warned and the brakes preconditioned for maximum effectiveness. The driver can be specifically alerted to the presence of cyclists. And should you be travelling at under 30 miles an hour and be not responding to a detected hazard, the brakes will automatically be applied, reducing the severity of any resulting accident and hopefully alleviating it altogether. Active Guard Plus also includes two further elements, lane departure warning to stop inattentive drivers from veering over lane delineating lines on the highway, and speed limit assist, which pictures the speed limit signs you pass, displaying them on the dash. Other neat safety features fitted as standard across the range include an alertness assistant that monitors you for signs of drowsiness, a trailer stabilisation function that will stop trailer sway if you've a trailer fitted, and hill start assistant to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Best of all, we think, is the BMW emergency call with teleservices system, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. This system not only gives them your exact GPS location, but also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, how many airbags burst and so on. If you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be. A potentially life-saving difference. Setup's now been further improved to also automatically activate after low speed collisions below the threshold for airbag deployment. Immediately after the impact, flashing up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistant service directly. We shouldn't forget that this BMW comes with all the expected basic passive safety stuff too. Things like twin front side and curtain airbags, plus front and rear Isofix child seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control. Primarily DSC plus stability control and DTC traction control. Plus there's a performance control system that suppresses understeer in tight turns that will also see you experience extra traction from an electronic electronic differential lock control system. There's plenty of braking peace of mind too, with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, CBC or cornering brake control and a neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Panic stops are aided by a brake assist system and advertised to following most wrists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. And you also get a multi-collision braking function that in the event of an impact will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. Want to go further with safety kits? Well, the extra cost option here is what BMW calls its driving assistant pack, which gives you a whole range of extra camera-based safety features. These include five key elements, and we'll talk you through them. First, there's lane departure warning with blind spot detection, which prompts the driver if they're about to pull out with a vehicle in their blind spot and will, if necessary, guide the car back onto the correct path by means of an automatic steering input. Next up are the rear collision prevention and rear crossing traffic warning features which both reduce the risk of a collision when reversing into roads obstructed from the driver's view. The approach control and pedestrian warning with city braking function feature builds on this car's autonomous braking tech for even greater peace of mind in urban situations and for the open road there's BMW's active cruise control with stop and go function tech, which will automatically keep you a safe distance behind the car in front on the highway. 
Should you come across a motorway tailback, this feature can seamlessly slow the car to a stop, then, when appropriate, return it to cruising speed. That last feature can be ordered separately if you like the sound of it. The engine range on offer across this third generation one series lineup may not look very different to what was on offer before, but BMW is keen to point out that every single twin power turbo unit has been subjected to significant efficiency fettling, as was necessary to match a class standard vastly improved since the days of the previous F20 generation model. The three-cylinder petrol unit we're trying here in this 118i variant, for instance, is five kilos lighter than it was previously. Changes to the various diesel units have also had quite an effect, improving efficiency by around 5% or so, BMW claims. Also helping here is the 25 kilo reduction in weight made possible by this F40 design's new aluminium-rich FAAR platform. As a result, base petrol versions of this car can tip the scales with a curb weight of under 1.3 tonnes, which is pretty light for a premium hatch of this sort. It all explains why the fuel and CO2 stats delivered by mainstream 1 Series models are now virtually identical to those of directly equivalent Mercedes A-Class variants. We know, we've checked, which is another way of saying that the stats of this BMW are difficult to better in the segment, which wasn't previously the case with this model line. Let's get specific with figures, all of which, as usual, are based around the WLTP readings for fuel and NEDC readings for CO2 that, at the time of this test, the industry was working to. These figures are, as usual, based on the smallest wheels available with each engine. Obviously, bigger rims, like, for instance, the 19 inches fitted to this test car, will make a potentially significant impact on the stats applicable to the car you end up choosing. We'll start at the bottom of the range with the 118i three-cylinder petrol and 116D three-cylinder diesel one-series derivatives that most buyers of this car will choose. The 118i variant we're trying here in manual form manages up to 47.1 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and up to 122 grams per kilometre of NEDC rated CO2. Get it as an auto and the fuel figure is marginally different, up to 45.6 mpg, but the CO2 reading is substantially better, 113 grams per kilometre. Switch to the alternative 116D diesel and you're looking at up to 62.8 mpg for a manual and up to 61.4 mpg for an auto, with both transmissions recording an identical 100 grams per kilometre of CO2. On to the 2-litre diesel models. The 118D manages up to 60.1 mpg and 108 grams per kilometre in manual form, or 57.6 mpg and 109 grams per kilometre as an auto. The auto-only 120D xDrive manages up to 53.3 mpg and 117 grams per kilometre. And for completion, we'll tell you that the auto-only M135i xDrive petrol hot hatch variant manages up to 36.2 mpg and, on 18-inch wheels, 154 grams per kilometre of CO2. BMW has also engineered a plug-in petrol-powered version of this car, fitted out with the same 1.5-litre powertrain as features in the Mini Countryman PHEV and the BMW X1 xDrive 25e. But that wasn't available from the launch of this F40 Generation 1 series model. As a guide, though, for this electrified variant, you'd be looking at official figures of around 145 mpg on the combined cycle and about 40 grams per kilometre of CO2 with two and a half hour wall box recharging times and a WLTP rated all electric range of around 30 miles. Whatever kind of 1 Series engine you choose, it'll benefit from the Munich Maker's various efficient dynamics technologies there to keep running costs in check. There's an engine auto stop-start system, as you would expect, and at highway speeds when you're in either comfort or eco-pro mode, the cruise control can use a coasting feature to seamlessly decouple the engine from the transmission to reduce friction and consequently save fuel. With this F40 generation model, the coasting and auto stop functions take their cue from data supplied by the navigation system. The same data is used by auto gearbox models to avoid unnecessary gear changes in a quick succession of bends. 
Of course, the driver will also need to do their part. The figures we've just quoted assume that the car is being run in the drive performance control system's most frugal Eco Pro mode. In this setting, the air conditioning and power steering only work when required to save energy. You can configure or deconfigure the various power source elements within Eco Pro if you wish, activating or deactivating efficiency programs for things like seat heating, climate, and what BMW calls light and sight elements. You'll want to keep an eye on how frugal your recent mileage has been. A journey data part of the centre dash infotainment screen's driving information section shows a useful fuel graph to brief you on that. The same section also has an energy flow graphic showing you at any time what's being powered by what. And there's a driving style analysis screen that when the Eco Pro mode is activated, rates your driving with marks out of five for anticipation and acceleration and works out the extra mileage range that any more frugal driving has gained you. What else? Well, routine maintenance is dictated by condition-based servicing that monitors oil level and engine wear, taking into account how long it's been and how far the car has travelled since its previous garage visit. You can check all of this using menus in the iDrive centre dash display. The centre dash screen's car section tells you engine oil level, service requirements, and on a diesel model, your add blue level. Plus, the car will give you four weeks notice of when a checkup is needed, so you have plenty of time to book it in. A tele-services feature comes as part of the BMW Connected Drive services. You can also access through the iDrive infotainment system. And via this, before each service appointment's due, your One Series can automatically put in a tele-services call to your nominated BMW service centre, complete with detailed information on vehicle condition. You'll then get a call to arrange a service appointment, something you'll already have budgeted for if at the point of original purchase, you opted for one of the two fixed cost service inclusive or service inclusive plus packages, which cover you for five years or 50,000 miles. With these, after a one off payment, which can be as little as around £400, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on the car has been paid for during this period, including items such as oil, spark plugs, and filters. What else might you need to know? Residual values? Well, independent experts reckon that a one series will hold on to between 44 and 52% of its original value after the industry standard three year or 36,000 mile ownership period. That compares with a rival Mercedes A-Class, which achieves 46 to 52%. Bear in mind, as usual, with a premium product that if you load your car up with expensive extras, you're unlikely to get that money back at resale time. An exception, though, might be the live cockpit professional media package we've been recommending with its digital dash, larger infotainment screen and extra connectivity. On to the warranty package. BMW's warranty only lasts for three years, but it includes an emergency breakdown service, and at least it isn't mileage limited, unlike the comparable package you get as standard with a rival Audi. You can, of course, extend the warranty with either monthly or annual payments. There's a three-year paintwork warranty and the usual 12-year anti-corrosion warranty. As for insurance groups, well, you're looking at Group 20 for this petrol 118i or Group 16 for a 116D diesel. It's Group 21 for a 118D diesel or Group 22 if you get that car with M Sport trim and Group 26 for a 120D xDrive. The top M135i xDrive petrol hot hatch is Group 36. We can't help feeling a little disappointed that this Mark III 1 Series has abandoned its unique rear-driven selling point. But at the same time, we can't help being impressed by the way that the Munich makers managed to retain so much of this car's eager, dynamic character, despite the fundamental engineering changes visited upon it. Its model will still beat most of its rivals for driver appeal, just not by such a significant margin as before. 
But we'll take that, given that this is the first one series with reasonably sleek looks, proper rear passenger space and a decent boot. The cabin's far smarter than it was, and this model is certainly far better prepared than its predecessor in terms of media connectivity and camera-driven safety provision. Now, you'd be able to downsize into it far more easily if it was necessary to do so from a larger BMW model. Are there issues? Well, we think sales of the top M135i variant could suffer over those of its predecessor. Four-wheel drive and four cylinders may be a better real-world shopping rocket solution, but it simply isn't as special a package as rear-wheel drive and a sonorous straight six. And in the mainstream range, well, there are some fine print irritations like the need to find extra for an Apple CarPlay subscription. And it's true that, as before, you've to spend plenty on the options list for this car to really feel special. The results when you do, though, are immensely appealing, especially if you go for the live cockpit professional package we'd recommend. In summary, De Eisner has become a whole lot more competitive in this guise. About to choose a Mercedes A-Class, an Audi A3, or even a plusher VW Golf? Well, you really ought to try one of these two. You might be surprised at just how much you like it.